First of all, a very warm welcome to you on our 71st Independence Day. It's very nice to see such a big crowd uh, relatively early in the morning. Uh, this time I've written my speech because I tend to forget to say things. Um, and there are certain things which I want to remember to say today. So India is now 71 years old, past retirement age for an individual, but very young for a nation. In this young nation, we are a very young institute trying to compete with universities which are hundreds of years old. So how do we become world class? So we have all been told that a world class research institute has many characteristics. Much of what I'll be saying now will be obvious to many of you, but it sometimes is necessary to state and restate the obvious. So a world class institute carries out research uh, that, just does, that doesn't just produce publications, but c contributes to real advance of the subjects being studied. It imparts an education that teaches students to think independently on their own and to partake of the joy of learning. It ensures that each student acquires the knowledge and skills and develops, very importantly, the self-confidence to do well in life not just in examinations. It fosters a culture of hard work and not of show, a culture of scholarship, a culture of rigor in academic activities, and a culture of innovation. It thrives on extensive student-faculty interactions. It has faculty members and students who are technically very good and who continuously strive for excellence. It provides infrastructure that enables excellent work to be done. It enables the faculty member to function in the manner of an entrepreneur limited only by his or her own intellect. So we have heard all this over and over again. The real question is, how do we actually achieve this? So before I joined ISA, I was at the National Center for Biological Sciences, NCBS. It has an international reputation today, but when I joined, it was literally only an idea, the idea of Obed Siddiqui. We began by looking for land in different states to find a suitable location for the institute. Today it is firmly established as an excellent research institute. How did it do it? So my experience has taught me that what matters is not show, but substance. So we need to have a good infrastructure, but not necessarily the fanciest. This infrastructure, very importantly, needs to be run efficiently and professionally. World-class institutes expect excellence not just from the faculty members and students, but from all their employees, including those in the maintenance and support services, and work of all sorts need to be supervised well. We need to respect the work of all employees. How you do your job is valued not just what you do. Employees must have a sense of self-worth and take pride in doing their work well. This happens when the worth of all jobs is appreciated. This happens when housekeeping janitors are not asked to carry files and other objects around or to close doors after others. When security guards do only security and do not act as pewns. When gardeners are appreciated for the hard work they do in making the surroundings look good. We need to have an ambience conducive to serious hard work. The whole campus community must make it their responsibility to keep the campus and the work environment clean and beautiful. When we put in the effort to keep a campus looking good, we automatically put in more effort to, uh, in doing good. We have to make our work environment such that it is a pleasure to work here. I say this because we have been recently making our campus ready for a large scale tree planting activity. And what we have uncovered are large piles of garbage and debris all over the campus. And that should really shame us all. We need to have a culture of little hierarchy between students and faculty, between junior faculty and senior faculty, 
so that everyone is approachable. Junior colleagues must be treated with respect. We must listen to everyone's views and respect them. We must make decisions after listening to differing opinions. At the same time, we must respect decisions that differ from our own opinions. We need to make sure that women faculty and other employees, as well as women students, are not discriminated against and are not harassed because they are women. We need to make sure that gender as well as sexuality sensitization prevails and that no one feels uncomfortable in any setting on the campus. You may ask, what has this to do with good science? It all comes down to a matter of respect. Respect for others, respect for the ideas of others, translate into a community where good ideas are actively encouraged, irrespective of their source, where questioning is welcome and not looked upon as a personal insult. This is the foundation of truly excellent education and research. We need to have a 21st century mindset to do tomorrow's science today. Thank you.